everyone, and welcome to the Birmingham Vineyard Kids Stream. I'm Becky, this is Lauren. Hey yeah. Lauren. Hey. So today we're continuing our series on living as Jesus' disciples. What, what have you got here, Lauren? Well, this is an ultrasound picture of a baby before it was born. Ooh, that's amazing. Can I take a closer look? Yeah. Oh, I see. You can, uh, can you see... Uh, what, what am I looking at here? Okay, so this is the head, and then we've got the legs over here. <laughs> oh, Can you see? Yeah. Yeah, wow. That beautiful baby was growing inside the mother, but no one could see it outside for a very long time. It's nice to have this picture, but it's not super clear, is it? Yeah, that's right. No one saw the good thing growing except for God. Mm. The Bible tells us that God sees us even when we're growing in our mother's womb. Does God see everything, Lauren? Yeah, he does. Hmm. The other day, I did something really kind for my friend, but she didn't even thank me. I felt a bit disappointed about that, if I was honest. I was really hoping she'd notice and say thank you. Ah, well, then today's Bible verses are going to be really encouraging because God saw that. Ooh, really? He noticed and it made him really happy. Oh, nice. That is really good news. I can't wait to find out more. But let's play a game first, shall we? Ooh, okay, yeah. Today we're going to play the game of what is in my bucket. I'm going to describe something to you and then you need to guess and see if you can guess before I lift it out and show you. Okay, first thing. Okay, the first thing in my bucket, it is spherical. Uh, it's a bit squashy. Feels like it's got some bounce to it. Can you guess what it is? It's a ball. How cool is that? Lauren's catching my things over there. Okay, the next thing in my bucket, um, it feels like it's kind of made of grass. Uh, it's round. It's about the same size as the head, possibly. Uh, and it's got a big lump on top. What do you think it is? That's right. It's a hat. Well, it's much too small. Here you are. Excellent. Okay. Let's in my bucket. Uh, this one is, well, there's a lot of it. It's very thin. Uh, it's kind of, kind of scratchy. Um, and it feels like, feels like I could pull it out really long. What do you think it could be? Should we try? Should we see? It? Out. That's right. Some string. Good job, everybody. Still with me. Right, okay. Let's have another look at it and see what we can find. Okay. Oh, these feel plasticky. There's two round bits with some glass in them. And then there's two long bits stuck on the side like legs. Can you guess what they are? <laughs> That's right, a pair of glasses. I'm not gonna throw those. Put them here safely. Okay. All right, my next thing, uh, it's got a long stick and a round bit at the top. Can you hear that sound? Like a plasticky wrappery sound. Do you know what that is? It's a lollipop. Yes, keep, please. Keep that off. Okay. Last thing. Ooh, this thing feels like it's metal. It's made of metal, cold, um, in the shape of a person. But it's very thin, has a big hole in the middle. Hmm, what do you think it could be? I think it smells. Smells a little bit like biscuits. Did you guess what it was? Tricky one. It's a cookie cutter. Mmm. Here you are. Woo, that game was fun. Okay, so who can remember what we talked about last week? Yeah, we talked about forgiveness and seeing people how God sees them. This week, we're going to read the next part of Jesus' big sermon in Matthew chapter 6 and look at the heart of doing good. Let's dive right in and see what Jesus is saying, shall we? Okay, so Matthew 6, it says, Watch out, don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth. They have received all of the reward they will ever get. 
But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private and your father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pay, pray pub publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. Then we skip to verse 16. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one will notice that you're fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. Okay, so we have Jesus' teachings on three things there, don't we? Giving to those in need, praying and fasting. And Jesus said the same thing at the end of each one. What was it? Your father who sees everything will reward you. Have you ever given something to someone who really needs it? Maybe you've given to someone who's hungry some food. Or maybe you've given some money to a person or a charity that needs help. Maybe you've given up some of your time to spend time with someone who's lonely or struggling. It feels great to do these things, doesn't it? I love the feeling I get when I know I've helped someone. It can be really tempting to tell everyone about it because of how good it's made me feel. But is that what Jesus is saying we should do here? Hmm. No, it's not. Did you hear what Jesus said? He said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Now, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Of course, your hands are going to know what the other one is doing. They're both controlled by your brain. But Jesus is using an exaggeration to make a point. He wants us to be generous, to give almost without thinking, not caring too much for what it might cost us or what other people might think of us because of it. Sometimes if we think too hard about an idea, we can talk ourselves out of it or we can become motivated by what our friends might think. Or as Jesus puts it, our left hand might try to stop our right hand from giving so much or we might do it but be persuaded to tell everyone what we're doing. When we boast about giving to the needy or how much we pray or fast, we're bringing attention to ourselves rather than God. And Jesus says that it's the only reward that we will get. We're looking for that short reward from those around us, maybe a round of applause or a well done or a treat maybe, rather than looking for the reward from God, which Jesus tells us is all we need and lasts forever. One way that I've tried to make sure that I'm not looking for a well done from others when I'm being generous is by sending gifts in secret. So I might send someone some money or some flowers or some chocolate, but not tell them that it's from me. This means I get the joy of sending someone something, but I don't get their thanks. Here's a quick story. One time I had been chatting to God about how I wanted to be more generous and thoughtful to the people around me. One of my friend's names popped into my head and I knew that God had brought that person to my mind and I needed to get them something to cheer them up. So I decided that they might like some flowers and because it was lockdown at the time, I would have to send them in the post. I knew that flowers and some kind words in the note would cheer my friend up, so that made me happy. But it was so hard not to add my name to the bottom. I knew that if I put the flowers were from me, I would get excited for the thank you message and the idea that they would see me as a good friend. If I put my name on the bottom, I knew that I was only sending the flowers so that I could get a nice thank you message from my friend, not for that joy of knowing that she would be cheered up and knowing that God saw my generosity. Jesus encourages us that it doesn't matter what other people think of us. It doesn't matter if they love us or hate us at the end of the day. What really matters is that God knows us and loves us. Jesus said, when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. Jesus sees our hearts. He sees every good thing we do. Love and attention from other people feels nice, but it doesn't last forever. 
Jesus' love lasts forever, and he loves to bless our lives when we're faithful to him and choose his way over the way of those around him. And Jesus wants to help us do this. Giving, praying and fasting are all hard things to do a lot of the time. And most of us love doing things that make other people happy. But when we love Jesus and choose to follow him as his disciples, then as our love for him grows, our heart becomes more like Jesus's heart. And when this happens, our love for other people grows too. And then it becomes easier to give, pray and fast because we love Jesus so much and only want to please him and not other people. So what have we learned about being Jesus' disciples today? Well, Jesus sees our hearts and wants to help us do good as we love him. When we give, pray and fast in secret for Jesus, rather than showing off to other people, that's where the real reward comes. Jesus' love lasts forever, even after we die on earth, and we will be with him, the best person ever, forever. Okay, I have here a bowl of beautiful looking fruit. Ooh, okay. Exciting, what have you got? This apple looks pretty perfect, That's really red nice. and shiny. Or how about this orange? Mm, I do love a good orange. It looks good. perfect, ready to eat, doesn't it? Does, it? yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one, this banana looks pretty That's banana ordinary. bread, isn't it, that one? Yeah, That's that, nice. that is, no, I'm not gonna eat that. Okay, but what about this one? Ooh. Now this one looks very ordinary. Actually, it doesn't look very tasty when you look at it, does it? It's hairy. Yeah, it isn't shiny like the orange or brightly colored like the apple. Probably a lot of people wouldn't even notice it. How many of you know what this fruit is called? Mm. Go on, Becky. It's a, is it a kiwi fruit? It is, yeah. And those of you who have had a kiwi before know that while it isn't showy on the outside, it's actually really beautiful on the inside. Okay, so let me show you. I've got my knife here. I'm gonna cut it in half. Careful, that was not nice. juicy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a trained professional. <laughs> okay. Here we go, are you ready? Whoa. Okay, it looks quite different, doesn't it? It's an ornery brown colour with rough and almost spiky skin, but inside it's beautiful green with a lovely pattern, almost like a flower. And it's really healthy too. In fact, a kiwi is one of the healthier fruits with lots of vitamin C and fiber. Mm. Yeah, I did not know that, that's very interesting. Mm. And God wants to make us a little bit like this kiwi. The kiwi doesn't show off how good it is on the outside. It's happy to do good for our bodies without everyone noticing it or saying how wonderful it is. So. Just as God sees the inside of the kiwi and knows everything about it, so he sees us inside and out and is so pleased when we pray or do good things for others quietly without making a fuss or trying to get people to notice, but just happy knowing that Jesus sees and knows. Even when no one else notices, Jesus does. Oh, that's cool. Mm. Yeah. So let's chat to Jesus together now. Okay. Let's take a few minutes together now to chat with God and see what he'd like to speak to us about. First, let's think about how it makes us feel knowing that God sees everything. How does it feel that God sees all the good stuff that you do? Let's tell God what that feeling is. Do you have any questions about that? Let's just bring up, let's ask God our questions too. Sometimes as we ask questions, God might give you something to catch from him, like a picture or a word or just a sensation, or something like that. Now let's see if God wants to share anything with us about people that we know, maybe even members of our family that we could do good for quietly. Like in Lauren's story when he popped a name of a friend into her head. Let's see what Jesus wants to share with us. Thank you so much, God, that you see and notice every good thing. Help me to focus on what you think more than being thanked by others. Amen. Okay, let's worship our great big God together now. 
Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. fantastic that our God is so big that he can see even the secret things and everyone at the same time. Oh yeah it is, mm. pretty cool. Okay so now we're going to hand over to Jocelyn to do our craft with us. We're going to make a heart as we think about the things we love. We can even use it to help us to chat to Jesus and thank him for all of those things. Here we go. Ooh. Hi kids and today we're going to make a heart and inside we're going to put the things that you love the most. So, I'm going to need to get either red or pink paper, some white paper, scissors, glue, and some colouring pens. So, using your red or pink paper, I've got pink, I'd like you to fold it in half, like this, and then I'd like you to fold it in half again. Or I'd like you to take the short end and fold it into the middle so it kind of makes a cone. Then I'm going to draw a semicircle. I'll show you in a minute. There we go. So that is going to, that semicircle there is going to form the top curve of our heart. So Using my scissors, I'm going to chop that along that line and then when I open it out, you get a, something that looks like a heart shape. I'm going to take a little bit more off like that so it actually looks more rounded like a heart. Then 
Inside, we're gonna put the things that we love. So I've got toys, family, friends. You can put whatever you like in. So I've got my coloring pen. So I'm gonna put um, family. Mm, they've got a dog, so I'll put the dog down. Um, my books, or if you're feeling very adventurous, you can get your piece of white paper, I'm gonna fold it in half and then half again, just so I can get a piece that will fit in my heart. Cut that down the middle and then cut it again. So I've got a small square that will fit in my heart. Then I use my glue to stick that in. And then we stick that in and you can then, if you want to, you can draw your, the things that you love as well. So I'm going to draw a book and then I'll draw three, four, a dog too. Like that. Enjoy. So now it's time to hang our picture on the wall and to remember what we talked about today. It's a kiwi fruit. So it will definitely remind me that that's what Jesus sees on the inside that matters. Ooh, exciting. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'd love to get to know you. So if we don't already, uh, then do visit our website for details all about our kids and families ministry and our church and how you can get stuck in www.birminghamvineyard.com. Yeah, we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye.